This episode of Toy Box Movie Reviews is brought to you by Eternal Curse. Not a fan of either romance or fantasy stories, Toy Thomas's debut novel Eternal Curse combined these two styles to hold my attention from beginning to end. Author Neil James. Eternal Curse is the story of a man who may just be the answer to a spiritual war swiftly heading his way, but for now he just wants to be a man. Eternal Curse Giovanni's Angel, available online and wherever books are sold. Hello and welcome to Toy Box Movie Reviews. Today I am reviewing Unbreakable as part of a monthly blog hop called Mock Squid Soup, a film society. You can check the description below to learn more about that film society. My review will consist of me asking myself 10 questions and answering them to the best of my ability. Now, I've actually gotten some feedback about this. It's some some of my viewers, the few that I have, you're so precious to me, have told me that, you know, my format is a little bit impersonal. And I kind of agree the original intent of this format was for me to have a guest so that the whole interview process would seem a little bit more natural. Um, I still am going to kind of stick with it. So if you'll bear with me, I think I still have some good insights if you can get past the, you know, the platform. And whenever I do have a guest, um, it will should be pretty good. So um, just kind of bear with me on that. We'll see what happens down the road. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm very excited. What is this film about? In case you didn't know, I'm a huge geek and so proud. Um, as geeks go, we are passionate. We are a passionate bunch. We either love something or we hate it. Um, as far as this film goes, it seems that on a large scale, a lot of people that I know hate it, even though it did well at the box office, but I really like it. Um, it has now at least developed a cold following. I personally think people just weren't ready for it when it came out and I feel that much of the current success of like Marvel and DC films has a lot to do with seeds that were planted by this film. In this story of what comic books could be in a world where people love their fantasy and fiction only because they truly believe that it's not real, David Dunn starts to learn that he is well above average and he ends up seeking the knowledge of art collector Elijah Price for guidance. What did I think of the title, poster, and or trailer? Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you know that, um, like I said, I'll be geeking out throughout this review. For this review, I decided to go back, um, take the extra mile, and watch the original trailer again to see if I could remember what about it made me um, want to see this film the first time around. As movie trailers go, most of them irritate me. Um, they either give too much away, they are filled with nothing but shock value, or they're too long or completely mislead you. I don't think that this trailer does that. This trailer is probably one of the last few that I watched for a, mu for a movie that I was actually interested in seeing. Today, I do not watch movie trailers for movies that I'm anxious to see, and I, and I have been happily appreciating my movie going experience because of it. Now, having said that, this trailer uh, was just what I needed at the time that this film came out. It wasn't too long and there wasn't a whole lot of shock value. There was plenty of intensity and mystery to draw you in, but the whole movie or the high points weren't given away. Um, I like the fact that Samuel L. Jackson's character is clearly depicted as being a major role, but not much is explained about him. When I saw this trailer, I remember thinking, and here's my quote, this is going to be a cool movie about a real life superhuman. I, po I hope people don't write it off as comic bookish. Now at the time, I really didn't know this film was about comic books. Um, nothing indicated it in the movie trailer and in the other marketing. Um, now I'm glad that I was both kind of right and wrong about this film. I think this film helped change a lot of people's minds about comic books and I'm glad. What did I think of the main characters and how the actors portray them? <laughs> I thought Bruce Willis was more believable as a hu superhuman in this film than a badass cop <laughs> in the Die Hard series. And that's saying a lot because I do actually like the Die Hard series minus the last one. But, 
David Don is an average Joe in every sense of the term. He may even a bit he may even be a bit below average and yet he has something special within him that makes him above average and just right for the role of hero. David Don is unlike most heroes in three main ways and this is where I geek out. Let's see. A Unlike Superman, David isn't born knowing that he's different and he doesn't have to pretend to be normal. For him, his greatest struggle is going to be learning how to be a hero and keep his normality. B. Unlike Batman, David isn't trying to fulfill a void or right a wrong or seek vengeance or justice. He's just a guy who likes helping people and he doesn't know why. It's literally something within him compelling him. Uh, C. Unlike, say, a Spider-Man character, maybe more like a mutant, David is born with his abilities, but they remain dormant until he's ready to test them and use them. Unlike mutants, he doesn't have a chance to accept his reality of his abilities in his youth or while going through puberty. It all hits him at middle age. Um, all in all, David is more like a Luke Cage, um, Power Man type character. He can't fly or control elements, but he can blend seamlessly in with average human society, which can be both a blessing and a curse. I don't think David's, um, David Dunn's alter ego is ever actually given a name, but I think it should be security. And like many other heroes, his green um, work poncho could serve as his cape. Here, here's another little, you know, me geeking out. I'm going to kind of give you a, um, a, a, I guess my synopsis, a one-liner of what his superhero character be, character would be. Security, the green light of hope through darkness. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson was wonderful as both friend and foe, believer and skeptic, mentor and arch enemy. Sam Jackson isn't known for playing vulnerable roles. Even his portrayal of the grief-stricken and angry father in A Time to Kill exudes a level of pride in his character that shows strength. Elijah Price, however, is a different twist um, to the pride that exudes from this man's talent. This character is smart and witty, but desperate and vulnerable in a scary way. Before you even understand exactly what Elijah's role is in the whole scheme of things, you get a sense that something's just not right about him. Too much of his life's hope is wrapped up in David being the one he's been seeking. Mr. Glass reminds me of other passionate and misunderstood dark characters who under the right circumstances could probably be good guys, but there's just too much pain and desperation in their lives to make it so. I think of Mr. Freeze, the version where he, all he wants to do is save his wife and he ends up turning himself into a monster just so he can preserve himself and try to save them both. I like that Mr. Glass wears um, black and purple. I think it's bold and noble, but it can also be a bit menacing. Oh, and his glass cane is just awesome. Finally, uh, young Spencer Treat Clark, I hope I got that right, um, does a phenomenal job playing the role of a troubled child coping with the breakup of his parents while also rediscovering his father as the hero that most boys know their dads to be. What did I think of the direction and cinematography? Let me rant for a second. This is one of M. Night Shyamalan's early movies where people just pretended to love his stuff because Hollywood told them to, and then Hollywood changed their mind. I mean, I am not the guy's biggest fan, but I think that a lot of people complain about his movies just because other people do. So, <clears throat> it seems like this whole movie was shot in a weird kind of sepia tone with alternating shades of green, purple, and even grayscale. Uh, there were little splashes of bright lights and color used to highlight certain things, and I liked that effect. Um, this director seemed to use a lot of long angles and kind of short spaces and vice versa. Um, <clears throat> I could be wrong, but I, be I feel like it gave off this uh, appearance of paneling. Um, unlike the 2003 Hulk film, which actually used square paneling in the scenes, 
just in case you didn't know you were watching a comic book movie, I feel like these um, angles seem a little bit more natural. In one scene, it seems as though the camera is focusing in on the character's ear and the whole scene is kind of happening in a box, but on the other side is this faceless teacher uh, telling, telling David Don the story of the drowning boy. Um, the whole thing kind of reminds me of maybe a comic book panel that's zooming in, but I could just be overthinking things. What did I think of the soundtrack and score? <clears throat> this movie didn't have a soundtrack that I know of, but the score is difficult to describe. Um, for me, a fan who's seen the movie several times, it is very distinguishable. I know when I'm hearing music that's from this movie. Um, to me, the score sounds like silence, but I know that that doesn't really make sense. So. I'll just say that the score is original and it makes an impact. Now, what that impact is is a little unclear, but it's good. <clears throat> what did I like about the story as a whole? As a whole, I love the story. I mean, um, I really like it to the point where I have argued with people about it before. Whenever someone tells me that they didn't get it, I want to slap them and then hug them and then tell them it's going to be okay and then watch the film with them again while giving them my scene by scene commentary. <laughs> I love the fact that Elijah's gallery is called limited edition and that his first comic book that he receives is a limited edition, uh, edition of an active comic not to be confused with action comics. What did I not like about the story? Okay, so here's where the geek in me gets a little bit angry, but it's all in love for the art, um, so I'll try to keep it a little brief. How does David Dunn fake an injury that's supposed to keep him from playing football for the rest of his life without any questions? Seems to me that, you know, a parent, a coach, heck, even a fan might want to know the details of why this star athlete is no longer playing football due to an injury. I mean, there should at least be like some x-rays or something. In Shyamalan's cap cameo, David is using his clairvoyancy to see if there's anything wrong happening in the stadium. He receives a clear image of a man in a red and blue jacket smuggling drugs. But when he confronts the guy, the jacket is different and there are no drugs. And I want to know why. I mean, is Shyamalan messing with his audience? Was there part of the scene that was removed and I need to go back and check the special features of my DVD? What happened that went wrong in the scene? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> oh, I also wonder who did it first, Shyamalan or Stan Lee? Now, Stan Lee has always had cameos in his comic books and television programming, but I wonder when did he do his first big screen cameo? Uh, the last thing I will say, uh, because I'm afraid I'm going to start thinking of other things to question, is about David's ability to be a good hero. Once it is established just what it is David's strengths and weaknesses are, um, it would have been nice to see him maybe kind of start an improvement plan, even though I know that probably would have dragged the film out a bit. Um, however, I found it to be irritating that David uses his ability to take a hit to wait out <clears throat> his foe. David really needs to learn how to fight, strategize, and for goodness sake, swim. Okay, what would I recommend this movie to others? Well, yeah, absolutely I would, and I've done so. I'll do it again. Um, nine, if so, who and what would I rate this film? I actually think this is a good movie for the whole family, although there are some intense themes and scenes. Uh, really, young kids may not be able to keep up with the slow, suspenseful pace, but hey, it's all good. On a scale of one to five movie reels, I give this film five movie reels. And yes, I was a little too excited to report that. Okay, next <laughs> and last. <clears throat> was there anything about this movie that could be related to anything that I've written or, you know, anything about me? Well, <clears throat> there is this motif in the comic industry that has been popularized on TV and in films as of late, which is the birth of a hero by the hand 
of their greatest villain. Um, back in 1989's uh, Batman, um, he is created by Jack Napier when he kills young Bruce's father, only to later be turned into the Joker by Batman. In my Eternal Curse series, my readers are given a similar dynamic between the characters of Giovanni, Bletzian, and Marcos, but I won't go into a whole lot of detail about that. Obviously, I have been influenced by things that I've read and things that I've seen um, in the areas of comic books and superheroes. What can I say? I'm a fan. <clears throat> well, that all seemed like a mouthful. I hope it wasn't too painful. I know I geeked out, but I was really excited. Uh, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this uh, Toy Box movie review of Unbreakable. And I hope that you would join me again for more reviews down the road. In the comments below, please tell me what you think of this film. What would you have rated it? Share with me um, one of your favorite lines or scenes from the movie. Mine is actually when David returns home late one night after one of his patrols. And he picks Audrey up and carries her into the bedroom and tells her that he had a bad dream. Now, I'm not one for sap, but that was some really good writing and it's totally relatable to anyone in, you know, a relationship. So, uh, my next Toy Box movie review will be Life Aquatic. Have you seen this movie? Even if you haven't, you can go ahead and follow me on Twitter and tell me what you think. You can use the hashtag Toy Box Movies and you'll have a chance to be featured in my next episode. Uh, my schedule is totally wacky this month. Who knows how it got all messed up. So um, this Saturday coming up, I will be posting a pop quiz pressure instead of another movie review. It should still be a lot of fun. And remember, if you are ever interested in guest hosting or sponsoring a Toy Box webisode, you can visit etoythomas.com to learn more about that. So until next time, this is Toy Thomas saying, I think that authors are just as important to the world of entertainment as music groups and movie stars. See ya.